Hello, this is the Power Queen LifePo 4 100 amp hour 12.8 volts lithium iron phosphate deep cycle leisure battery. Now there's quite a lot to unpack there because um, lithium iron phosphate LIFEPO4 has a nominal cell voltage of 3.2 volts. So there are four cells in series inside this pack and four 3.2s are 12.8. So we know this is a 4S battery pack. Now 100 amp hours, we don't yet know whether this is a gross capacity or usable net capacity, but I intend to find out. Battery weight is 24.25 pounds which is 11 kilograms. And the dimensions are, well, it's 13 inches across there, uh, 6.77 front to back, and the height is 8.43 inches. Now on the top here, we have the positive and negative connections, and that's really all that you can see on this thing. It is just a sealed box with positive and negative connections. So I'll just take these uh, plastic protectors out and um, I've got uh, bolts and bolt covers that go in there. Now you'll notice that it doesn't have standard uh, domed lead acid style terminals and that's because this is intended as a leisure battery. It's not intended as an SLI starter lighting and ignition battery. So don't try using this to turn a starter motor. So 100 amp hours, this is rated for continuous discharge at 100 amps and you can also charge it at up to 100 amps. So I was thinking how best to test this battery and so I came up with uh, this contraption which is a couple of very heavy current straps with M8 uh, ring terminals on there. These recesses are M8 and the bolts you get are M8. And then these two bus bars, which I can plug banana plugs into and put a lots of loads in there. But in the manual, um, it actually says that although the continuous discharge is 100 amps, the maximum discharge current for five seconds is actually 280 amps. So how would I test this? Discharge it at 100 amps? or load it up to 280 amps and exceed to that five second spec. It's all a bit over the top really. So I thought I'd do my tests at a lower current. And there's a thing in the manual here that says when the battery stops working, uh, voltage less than nine volts, it has a chance that the BMS has shut off for protection. And you could try these various ways to get the BMS to turn back on for discharge that is. Um, cut off all the connections from the battery, leave it for 30 minutes, put a charger on it. But this one down here is interesting. Put a solar panel on it, um, 18 to 36 volt solar panel, to charge the battery for a few minutes. So I've got this 80 watt solar panel up on the fence and I thought if I connected that to the battery, why don't I just charge the thing fully up? It's going to take a while because these batteries are typically delivered uh, 30 to 50% state of charge. And then when it's fully charged, using this um, pair of bus bars, I'll stick a couple of car headlamp bulbs on it and fully discharge this battery. And I'll put the Coulomb counter on it so that I can do a full discharge test to see the actual capacity. Now here I've got um, the supplied M8 bolts, bolt covers, and I've also got these um, little connectors which I can use to convert uh, these to banana plugs. And I've got some banana plug cables. So I've put the first meter in uh, voltmeter mode across the battery and we have a resting voltage of about 13.1 volts and there's something quite interesting in the manual and that's this diagram here which um, is state of charge and they say you can get a rough indication but they do caveat that with this is not a very precise way of doing it because lithium iron phosphate has a very flat center part of the curve. So it's very difficult to estimate state of charge from voltage. But going by this, 13.1 volts says 40% state of charge. 
and these batteries uh, say they come somewhere between 30 and 50 so that sounds about right but let's get the solar panel now connected up now this is going to take quite a long time this might take a couple of days incidentally i do plan to charge this until the bms shuts off so i'm actually planning to test the um, cell over voltage cutoff then do a full discharge and measure the capacity of the battery um, until I get a low voltage cell cut off and then in a separate video I am planning to dismantle this battery even though the manual says don't do it but I think we'd like to see what's inside wouldn't we right the Sun's now on the panel and pretty much on axis although not vertically it's on axis horizontally this thing's angled down really for winter and uh, yeah we got four amps coming from that panel and the voltage is up to nearly 13.4 okay here's a better solution 160 watt flexible folding solar panel which I can move around with the Sun and now I'm getting 6.2 amps and 13.36 volts it's around 2 p.m. now the solar panels have been moved around with the Sun and we're still getting uh, six amps so oh, I think that's a cloud cloud going past um, and the battery is now at 13.5 volts it's the next day and I've got uh, the solar panel pointing towards the Sun we're actually getting 6.8 amps the battery is up to 13.57 volts now there's going to come a point where this flat phase of the charging uh, finishes and it starts to shoot upwards in voltage I'm not quite sure when it's going to be but what I'm planning to do is go with the over voltage disconnect so I'm going to let the battery disconnect at 15 volts now 15 volts is 7.5 3.75 volts per cell which is a little bit high for lithium iron phosphate but not dangerously so and not if it's only for a few seconds so yes I'm actually going to uh, wait for the current to drop to zero and see at what voltage that happens and hopefully I'll be out here to catch it on video now normally you wouldn't allow this battery to be charged to 15 volts um, you would use the settings the recommendations in the manual and there are recommendations for solar panels and a controller and they've got all sorts of numbers here bulk boost uh, these are typical for lead acid but 14.4 14.6 um, if you're using a battery charger set it somewhere between 14.2 and 14.6 and if you're using alternators or generators again between 14.2 and 14.6 volts now there's a whole section in the manual on series and parallel connections it says limitation for connecting batteries in series uh, four batteries and that's really to do with DC voltage. That's going to give you about 50 volts DC. If you go much higher than that, then you're starting to get to voltages which could present um, a danger. They say the limitation on uh, parallel connection is also four batteries. Uh, that's probably more of a practical thing than any real danger. I mean, most RVs or boats simply won't have space for more than four batteries in parallel. You could conceivably put more in parallel and there's a whole section in here on how to strap the batteries in series and parallel arrangements uh, if you want to use bus bars and the gauge of wire that you should be using for these serial and parallel configurations and of course safety precautions now if you put these batteries in series you have to realize that they will gradually drift out of balance because although the four cells in the battery are balanced uh, the cells of one battery won't be balanced with the cells of another so it says every six months um, disconnect all your batteries put them in parallel and leave them for what does it say uh, 30 minutes I think things are moving much more quickly now you can see the voltage pushing up in 10 millivolt increments as I speak so this battery is fully charged but I am going to wait for this to push up to 15 volts to check that disconnect so I'm expecting this voltage to accelerate now still got six and a half amps coming in but you can see that it's pushing rapidly now 
up to well the maximum recommended for charging is 14.6 uh, that's 7.3 as a half voltage 3 point oh, I can't think what that is uh, well that's interesting I missed the uh, current switch off because it occurred at about 14.3 volts and I wasn't expecting that I was expecting this to push up absolutely to 14.6 and then cut off at 15 it's cut off much earlier than that so what you can see now is no current flowing from the solar panel which is open circuit into the battery and the solar panels open circuit voltage which is 19.3 volts now the reason this stopped charging well below its maximum voltage could be cell imbalance if one cell has pushed very high long before the others that could be a reason why it's cut off early it's the only thing i can think and of course there's nothing on the battery to to be able to check that there are no uh, access points to the individual cells i'm now attempting to balance the power queen battery now i've been told by power queen that the bms balancing current is 35 milliamps plus or minus 10 milliamps and it only occurs during charging and it happens when the cell voltage is between or above 3.525 but of course at 3.75 the BMS shuts off charging so it'll only happen within that range so I've set up a power supply and I've set it to 35 milliamps it's actually showing 47 because it's not very accurate down at this very low end but you can see I've set it to 35 milliamps 15 volts and the battery is drawing <laughs> what's indicated as 47 milliamps but I think there's very little resolution down at this bottom end the battery is now at 13.58 volts and I will leave this set up um, and just see how high I can get the battery voltage to go. But at um, 35 or 47 milliamps, this is going to take quite a while. Now doing a full discharge test after attempting to balance the battery I'm not sure how successful that was but let's do the discharge test anyway so you can see I've got my high current rig with car headlamp bulbs uh, they're actually wired in series so they don't get excessively hot and bright and I've told the uh, Junstech monitor that the battery is 120 amp hours that means I can see how far short of uh, zero it gets to and currently it's saying it's down to 119 and the battery is at 99% so we'll take that all the way down the little monitoring unit is independently powered actually by that power bank up there so even when the battery cuts off the monitoring unit will stay on some hours later and we're down to 57 amp hours now I don't really know where it is in the sequence. It should go down to 20 amp hours because I started at 120 amp hours. Uh, the voltage is 12.96. You might be able to guess something from that. This has been running for about ooh, seven hours now, I think. And uh, the voltage is pretty low, 11.95 volts. It's down to 20.9 amp hours. So we're pretty close to being the full 100 amp hours which is quite impressive considering that I think that this battery uh, could do with some balancing it will naturally balance over time as it's charged and discharged but yeah we're about to uh, clock over the full 100 amp hours okay we've got the full 100 amp hours I started at 120 amp hours and it's down to less now than 20 amp hours so the battery has given us a full 100 amp hours not sure how much longer it's going to run for because we are down 11.66 volts and that's falling just approaching 101 amp hours we're down at 11.3 volts but there's 19 uh, amp hours remaining just dipping below 
11 volts okay just missed it got down to about 10.4 or something volts it's now switched off and it's done ooh, almost exactly 102 amp hours so to sum up this power queen lithium-ion phosphate battery um, does pretty much what it says on it um, and indeed it does deliver 100 amp hours I measured 102 amp hours so the next video is simply to take it apart cheerio so to sum up um, pretty much what it says on the tin this power queen uh, lithium-ion phosphate battery does indeed deliver 100 amp hours in fact I measured 102 um, so the next video will be to take this battery apart but for now, cheerio.